Good morning class. Today we will be looking at the kidney meridian. So the full name of this meridian is the kidney meridian of the foot Shaoyin. What this tells us is that it's a yin meridian of the foot. And what do we know about the direction of flow of all yin meridians on the feet? This is that they flow from the feet to the abdomen. And this meridian in particular has 27 points in total. And the common indications between these points are all related to the function of the kidneys according to Chinese medicine. So firstly, we know that the kidney is responsible for development and reproduction. And therefore, we can use points on this meridian to treat disorders of the reproductive system. This is things like seminal emission, impotence, infertility, etc. And then secondly, we know that it assists us in breathing and is responsible for receiving the qi from the air we breathe and therefore can also be used for disorders in breathing, uh, I mean of breathing. So this is things like asthma and cough, but these are specific ones that are caused from a disorder of the kidney and not those related to the lungs. And then thirdly and finally, we can use it for back pain. And this is due to the kidney governing the lower back and knees. Next, let's look at the course this meridian flows. So this meridian begins at the little toe. Uh, on the image at the bottom right, we're going to start on the image of the foot. And from the little toe, it crosses the ball of the foot to kidney one. From there, it emerges from the lower aspect of the navicular tuberosity. So that's this part over here. And then, so it emerges from the lower part of the navicular tuberosity and then runs posterior to the medial malleolus and enters the heel. So it actually runs posterior and inferior to the medial malleolus. And now we're going to move to the top right image. As you can see, it runs posterior and inferior to the medial malleolus, which is over here. And then from here, it actually does a little circle where it goes down and around and then returns back up. Um, and then from there, it continues up, ascending up the medial aspect of the lower leg to the medial portion of the popliteal crease. And from there, it continues up the posterior medial aspect of the thigh towards the vertebral column over there. Um, and then to the next, the next slide. Uh, from the vertebral column, uh, we finished over here. If you look at the image on the right, so this image is just showing us a lateral view so that we can see how the meridian moves po anteriorly, anteriorly or posteriorly. Uh, and the image on the left is going to show from the anterior aspect so we can see if it's moving laterally or medially. Um, so, so from the posterior, from the vertebral column, it ascends the vertebral column and enters the kidneys. At the kidneys, it yeah, diverges into two different channels. There's the ascending portion and the descending portion. So we're going to just focus on the descending portion for now. We'll talk about the ascending portion in the next slides. So from the kidney, it descends into the bladder. And from the bladder, it re-emerges in the lower abdomen and ascends the abdomen half a tun lateral to the umbilicus. From just the, from the upper abdomen, it moves slightly lateral to the two tun mark and ascends the ribs two tun lateral to the midline up until the clavicle. Next, we'll look at the major branches of the kidney meridian. So we already talked about the first branch a little bit in the kidneys, and we followed the descending portion, which continued down to the bladder. Now we're going to look at the ascending portion. So this portion emerges, re-emerges from the kidneys and ascends through the liver and diaphragm. It then enters the lungs and runs along the lungs up through the throat and terminates at the root of the tongue. Then there is a second branch which diverges at the lungs, joins the heart and travels to the chest to link with the pericardium meridian. 
So this slide shows the flow of the meridian on the chest and torso. And this is important as many of the points on the chest and torso share the same distance from the midline. So knowing this will allow you to know part of the location for many points. So the first thing we have to do is find the anterior midline. And that's over there. And then next we've got to find the midpoint of the clavicle. And how we do this is we find the tip of the chromium here and we have to find the suprasternal notch over here. So if you look at this image of the sternum, you can see, yeah, this is the suprasternal notch up here. So it's this part. And if you find the midway between these two points, that's the midpoint of the clavicle. We then divide the clavicle into four equal parts. So the meridian starts closer to the midpoint and then goes slightly wider on the chest. So if you see on the abdomen here, yeah, it starts quite close. And this is distance is 0.5 tsun. And then as it gets towards the upper part of the abdomen, it goes wider. And where this exactly is, is 6 tsun from the umbilicus. So how we find 6 tsun from the umbilicus is we first got to find the umbilicus. And then we got to find the xiphosternal junction. So this is the junction between the sternum and the xiphoid process. And if you look at the image again on the top right, that is located over here. And then the distance between this and the umbilicus is 8 sun. So what we do then is we divide it in half. And that gives us 4 sun above the umbilicus. And then what we've got to do is we've got to divide the upper half in half again, which will give us 6 sun. So that's over there. And then from there, we know it's going wider. And how wide it goes is it goes tutsun lateral to the midline and continues at the tutsun line from yeah all the way up to this clavicle. So which points can you use this for? You can use it for kidney 11 to 21 on the abdomen and they are all 0.5 tsun from the midline. And then kidney 22 to kidney 27 are all tutsun lateral to the midline. And then I've put this other meridian here on the torso. Can anyone remember what it's called? So this is the stomach meridian. And if you can remember the distances, it's four tsun lateral to the midline on the chest and two tsun lateral to the midline on the abdomen. And does anyone remember which meridian this is in the light green? This is the spleen meridian. And this one sits at four tsun lateral to the midline on the abdomen and six tsun lateral to the midline on the chest. So the frequently used points on this meridian are Yang Quan, kidney one, Ta Shi, kidney three, and Fu Liao, kidney seven. So the first point on this meridian is Yang Quan, kidney one. But before we talk about this point, I want to talk a bit about the indications for points on the kidney meridian. So when you see the indications here, some of them are similar to other points on other meridians. And what you need to note is that the symptoms on, these, on the kidney meridian are used for disorders related to the kidney organ. For instance, if we look here at vertigo, it is referring to vertigo caused by disorders of the kidney organ, such as kidney chi deficiency or kidney yin deficiency, and not those related to other organs such as liver chi stagnation or liver fire causing vertigo. Okay, now let's continue with Yongkyuan. So this is a Jingwell and wood point of the meridian, and it is located on the plantar aspect of the foot. In the depression, when the foot is in plantar flexion, approximately one third of the distance between the base of the second toe and the heel. So let's break this down one step at a time. So the first thing is the plantar aspect of the foot. That's the bottom portion of the foot, the part we stand on. Secondly, when the foot is in plantar flexion, this is when you stand on your tippy toes, so when the toes are pushed away from the body. And what it means here is that when you point the toes, it will make the depression where this point is more prominent. And the final point is one third of the distance between the base of the second toe up here and the heel over here. And we take this distance and we divide it into three equal parts and it lies at the upper third. The indications for this point, it can be used for headache, vertigo, 
dryness of the tongue, and loss of voice. It can also be used for dysuria, infantile convulsions, feverish sensations in the soul due to kidney yin deficiency, and loss of consciousness. Needling, so we more often use mock combustion on this point, but if you are needling it, it would be punctured perpendicular 0.5 to 1 tun. The next point is Rangu, kidney 2. This is a shing spring and fire point of the meridian, and it is located anterior and inferior to the medial malleolus. So that's this over here, the medial malleolus, the high point of the ankle on the medial side or the inner portion. And we've got to go anterior and inferior, which is in this direction. And what we are looking for is we're looking for that depression just below the border of the navicular tuberosity. And the navicular tuberosity is this bone over here. And then we're finding that depression just below the lower border, which is right there on the image. The indications for this point, it can be used for puritis vulva, prolapse of the uterus, irregular menstruation, and then also for dysfunction in the male reproductive system, such as nocturnal emissions and erectile dysfunction, and then difficult urination, hemoptysis, and thirst. And then it can also be used for diarrhea. But I've put diarrhea in red because this is a special type of diarrhea, which is due to kidney deficiency, and that will occur just before dawn. And then thirdly, it can be used locally for swelling and pain of the foot. Our needling, we're going to insert perpendicularly 0.5 to 1 sun. Next, we're looking at Tai Chi, kidney 3. So this is one of those frequently used points. It's a Shu stream, Yuan source, and earth point. So one of the reasons why we can use it for a lot of different indications, as you can see on this slide, is because of its function of being a Yuan source point. And I don't know if anyone can remember, but what is the function of Yuan source points? So these points are used to treat dysfunctions of the corresponding organ. So this would be any dysfunction of the kidney organ. And the location of this point, it is located in the depression between the medial malleolus. So again, we find that highest point on the medial side of the ankle. And the tendon calcaneus, which is the Achilles tendon over here. And we're looking for the depression between the two at the level of the tip of the medial malleolus. Um, and if you remember from the last slides, the bladder meridian, bladder 60 is actually opposite this point. It's using the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon, and we're finding the depression there. And that's why we can needle through bladder 60 towards kidney 3. And the indications for this point can be used for headache, dizziness, and insomnia, or it can be used for sore throat, toothache, def deafness, tinnitus, and hemoptysis. Uh, it can also be used for asthma, thirst, difficult breathing, and chest pain. And then related to reproduction, it can be used for stuff such as irregular menstruation, nocturnal emissions, impotence, and frequent urination. And finally, it can be used for pain of the lower back. And remember, this type of lower back pain is due to kidney deficiency, normally kidney chi deficiency. Our needling here, we, per per we puncture perpendicularly, 0.5 to 0.8 sun. The next point is Ta Tsong, kidney 4. This is the Luau connecting point of the kidney meridian, and it is located posterior and inferior to the medial malleolus. So once again, we locate the medial malleolus, and then we go inferior and posterior to it in this direction. And how we locate this point is we actually need to first find kidney 3, Tai Chi, and Kidney 5, Shui Kuan, and we'll find the midpoint between these two points. So you draw a line between these two points like this, and then the midpoint of them, we go 0.5 tun posterior to that, and that's where this point lies. The indications for this point can be used for hemoptysis, asthma, dysuria, constipation, difficult breathing and panting. It can also be used for dementia, and then locally it can be used for pain in the heel, stiffness and pain in the lower back. Needing, we puncture perpendicularly 0.3 to 0.5 tun. The next point is Shui Kuan, kidney 5. This is the Shi cleft point of the meridian, and it is located 1 tun directly below Tai Shi. So here's Tai Shi, and we're going directly below it. 
and it's in the depression anterior and superior to the medial side of the tuberosity of the calcineum. The calcineum is this bone over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to palpate along the back until we feel the tuberosity around here. And then we're going to go anterior and superior to this in this direction to get over here. And what you need to remember is that kidney 4 is only found by finding first kidney 3 and kidney 5. And then finding the midpoint over here and going half a turn posterior to this point. Indications. Shuaikuan can be used for amenorrhea, irregular menstruation, dysmenorrhea, and prolapse of the uterus. can also be used for dysuria. Our needling is perpendicular insertion, 0,3 to 0,5 turn. The next point is Jiao Hai, kidney 6. This is a confluent point of the yin heel vessel. And what this means is that it can treat conditions along the kidney meridian, but also along the pathway of the yin heel vessel. So let's just take a look at where the yin heel vessel flows. So as you can see on this image, the yin heel vessel starts here at the lower ankle at kidney 6 and then runs up the medial side of the leg, past the torso and chest, through the throat and ends at the, at the eyes. What this means is that this point can be used for conditions of the lung, the throat, the chest and the diaphragm. So where is this point located? It's located in the depression on the lower border of the medial malleolus. So remember from the previous points, the medial malleolus is over here, and then we're going to palpate downwards looking for a depression that lies below it. This depression lies between the two ligamentous bundles, over here and over there. The indications for this point, so this point can be used for irregular menstruation, morbid leucorrhea, prolapse of the uterus, and puritis vulva can also be used for frequent urination and constipation. So these are all related to the kidney meridian. And then the functions related to it being a confluent point, it can be used for epilepsy and insomnia, sore throat, asthma, and other heat symptoms on the upper head, such as dry throat, sore throat, red eyes, or swollen eyes. Needling, we're doing a perpendicular insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 turn. Next, we'll look at Fu Liu, kidney 7. This is a Jing River and metal point of the meridian, located Tu Tsun, directly superior to Tai Shi, kidney 3, on the anterior border of the tendocalcaneus. This is another name for the Achilles tendon. So if, we, so if we look at the image on the right, this is the Achilles tendon. We're going to its anterior border over here, and we're going Tu Tsun, superior to kidney 3. The indications for this point, it can be used for edema, abdominal distension, diarrhea, or borborygmus, and then locally it can also be used for muscular atrophy of the leg. Thirdly, it can be used for abnormal sweating, and I've highlighted this in red because this is a special function of this point. It can be used for any type of sweating, whether it's due to deficiency or excess. Our insertion is going to be perpendicular insertion, 0,5 to 0,7 sun. The next point is Jiao Xin, kidney 8. This is the Shi Kef point of the Yin heel vessel, located 0,5 sun anterior to Fu Liu, kidney 7, Tu sun superior to Tai Shi, kidney 3, and posterior to the medial border of the tibula. So this point differs from kidney 7 in that it's posterior to the border of the tibia. So the tibia is over here on the image, and we're just posterior to this border. Whereas kidney 7 was anterior to the Achilles tendon over here. The indications for this point can be used for irregular menstruation, dysmenorrhea, uterine bleeding, prolapse of the uterus, and irregular menstruation. Secondly, it can also be used for diarrhea or constipation. And thirdly, it can be used for pain and swelling of the testes. The needling? is perpendicular 0,5 to 0,7 sun. Next we'll look at Jubin, kidney 9. So this is the Shi Clef point of the yin linking vessel, located 5 sun directly above Tai Shi. So if we look at the image on the right, we can see Tai Shi down here by the ankle. We're going to go 5 sun above it, and then we're going to look for the inferior end of the gastronemus muscle, this muscle over here going to the inferior end. It actually normally ends like that. 
And then we're going to also be on a line drawn from Taishi, kidney 3, down at the bottom, and Yingu, kidney 10, up here at the top. Okay, and then the indications for this point, it can be used for mental disorders, pain of the foot and leg, and hernias. And we will needle perpendicular 0.5 to 0.7 tun. Next point is Yanggu, kidney 10. So this is the Hersey and water point of the kidney meridian. And its location is found with the knee flexed. So that's this image here at the top showing the flexion of the knee. And it's located in the medial side of the popliteal fossa. So this is the popliteal fossa here on the bottom image. And we're going to the medial side. And then it's found between the tendons of the muscles of the semitendinosus which is this bottom one here, and the semimembranosus up here. We've got to be between these two tendons. And our level is at the level of bladder 40. So if we go back to the bottom image over here, bladder 40 is located here, it, right in the fossa. So we've got to be level with this point like that. The indications, so this point can be used for impotence, hernia, uterine bleeding, dysuria, and spermatorrhea. It can also be used locally for pain in the knee and popliteal fossa, and then also it can be used for mental disorders. Needling, we're doing perpendicular insertion, 0, 0,8 to 1 sun. Next, we're looking at Hengu, kidney 11. So this point is located 5 sun inferior to the umbilicus. So if we look at the image here, here's the umbilicus, we've got to go 5 sun below it and if you remember from previous lectures the distance from the umbilicus to the pubic symphysis over here was five tsun so we divided it into five equal spots when finding points on the lower abdomen so this point because it's five tsun below the umbilicus it lies just superior to the border of the pubic symphysis and finally we're going 0.5 tsun lateral to kugu Ren, 12, REN 2 or the midline. The indications for this point, it can be used for fullness and pain of the lower abdomen, so that's a local function. Also, it can be used for dysuria, enuresis, nocturnal emissions, impotence, and spermatorrhea. It can also be used for pain of the genitalia. Our needling, we're going to insert perpendicularly 0.5 to 1 sun. Next is Daha, kidney 12. So this one is located 4 tsun inferior to the umbilicus and 0.5 tsun lateral to Jongji, REN3, or to the midline. Again, the functions are local, can be used for nocturnal emissions, impotence, morbid leukorrhea, prolapse of the uterus or spermatorrhea. It can also be used for pain of the external genitalia. Our needling is perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 tsun. The next point is Che Shui, kidney 13. So this point is located 3 tsun inferior to the umbilicus and half a tsun lateral to the midline at the level of Guan Yuan, Ren 4. So we find the midline. And remember, we're going to divide the lower abdomen from the umbilicus to the pubic symphysis into five equal parts. And this one, we're going to count down three. One, two, three, and this, po this point will lie over here. This point can be used for irregular menstruation, dysmenorrhea, and leukorrhea. can also be used for dysuria, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Needling, we're going to insert perpendicular 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Siman, kidney 14. So this point is located 2 sun inferior to the umbilicus and half a sun lateral to the midline at the level of Shimen, Rin 5. The indication for this point can be used locally for abdominal pain and distension, diarrhea, constipation and edema, and also for nocturnal emissions, irregular menstruation, dysmenorrhea, leukorrhea, spermatorrhea and bedwetting. And finally, it can be used for postpartum abdominal pain. The insertion is similar to the previous points. It's perpendicular, 0, 0,5 to 1 tun. The next point is Zhongju, kidney 15. This point is located 1 tsun inferior to the umbilicus and half a tsun lateral to Jin, Yin Jiao, Ren 7, 
or half a turn lateral to the midline. The indications for this point can be used for abdominal pain, constipation and diarrhea, or irregular menstruation. Needling is perpendicular 0.5 to 1 turn. The next point is Huang Shu, kidney 16. So this point is located at the level of the umbilicus, half a turn lateral to Rin 8, or half a turn lateral to the umbilicus. And if you noticed from the previous points on the lower abdomen, there is one at every tun from the pubic symphysis all the way down here on the image up to the umbilicus. So we got one every tun until the umbilicus. The, the indications for this specific point, it's for abdominal pain and distension, vomiting, constipation and diarrhea. It can also be used for irregular menstruation. Needling is the same as the previous points, perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point we'll look at is Shang Q, kidney 17. So this point is located 2 sun superior to the umbilicus and half a sun lateral to the midline at the level of Shia 1, Ren 10. And what I want you to remember here is that there's no point 1 sun above the umbilicus on the kidney meridian over here. And the indications for Shang Q can be used for abdominal pain or epigastric pain with a distending feeling, constipation and diarrhea. Needling is perpendicular 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Shu Kuan, kidney 18. So this point is located 3 sun superior to the umbilicus and half a sun lateral to Jian Li, Rin 11. And this is also half a sun lateral to the midline. The indications for this point it can be used for vomiting, epigastric pain, abdominal distension and constipation. It can also be used for postpartum abdominal pain and infertility. Needling is perpendicular 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Yendu, kidney 19. So this point is located 4 sun superior to the umbilicus and half a sun lateral to the midline at the level of Zhong 1, Ren 12. The indications for this point it can be used for borborygmus, abdominal pain, epigastric pain, and constipation and vomiting. Needling is perpendicular 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Fu Tonggu, kidney 20. So this point is located 5 tun superior to the umbilicus and half a tun lateral to the midline, level with Shang 1, Ren 13. The indications for this point is for abdominal pain and distension, vomiting and indigestion. Needling is still 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Yomen, kidney 21. So this point is located 6 sun superior to the umbilicus and half a sun lateral to GQ, Ren 14. The indications for this point are, are all around its location, so it can be used for abdominal pain and distension, vomiting, indigestion, diarrhea and morning sickness. The insertion is 0,3 to 0,7 sun. I want you to take note of this as this is different to all the previous points which could go 0.5 to 1 sun. So remember that. And also there's a caution on this point against deep insertions as these have a chance to puncture the liver. The next point is Bu Lang, kidney 22. So this point is located in the fifth intercostal space Tutsun lateral to the Rin meridian. And I want you to note here that it's Tutsun now. We know more at half a Tsun lateral to the midline. The indications for this point all around its location can be used for cough, asthma, distension and fullness of the chest and hypochondriac regions. Because you can see here's the chest region, it's in the chest region and the hypochondriac region which is just over here is also close to this point. It can also be used for vomiting anorexia and mastitis. Needling is oblique insertion, laterally 0.3 to 0.5 tun. And be careful not to insert deep or perpendicular as this can injure the underlying organs. The next point is Shin Feng, kidney 23. So this point is located in the fourth intercostal space over here and it's located 2 tun lateral to the midline. The indications are all related to its location, so it can treat cough, polypnea, fullness in the chest and hypochondriac regions. So remember these regions, chest, hypochondriac, and it can also treat mastitis. 
needling is p oblique insertion laterally 0.3 to 0.5 twin. And remember the caution against deep perpendicular or deep oblique insertion as the lungs lie beneath at this point. The next point is Ling Chu, kidney 24. So this point is located in the third intercostal space over here on the picture. And we now still two twin lateral to the Rin meridian. And this point can be used for cough, polypnea, fullness in the chest and hypochondriac regions, and also for mastitis. Our insertion is still in oblique insertion laterally, 0.3 to 0.5 twin. And remember the caution against deep perpendicular or deep oblique insertion as both have the risk of puncturing the lungs. The next point is Sheng Kang, kidney 25. So this point is located in the second intercostal space over here on the image. And it's still two tsun lateral to the Rin meridian or the midline over here. The indications, this point can be used for cough, polypnea and chest pain. Needling is the same as the previous points, so oblique insertion laterally 0.3 to 0.5 tsun. And again, the same caution against deep insertion, as this can puncture the lungs. Next, we're looking at Yu Zhong, kidney 26. This point is located in the first intercostal space, Tu Tsun, lateral to the Rin meridian. It's indications that can be used for fullness sensation in the chest and hypochondrium, bronchitis and polypnea. Needling is oblique insertion laterally, 0.3 to 0.5 Tsun with the same caution against deep insertion as this can puncture the lungs. The next point is Chu Fu, kidney 27. So this point is located in the depression on the lower border of the clavicle. So that's, here's the clavicle here on the image, and we've got to find its lower border. And it's, and then where along the clavicle, it's got to be too soon from the midline or from the Rin meridian. So we're going to go too soon lateral. The indications, this point can be used for cough, polypnea, and chest pain. Needling is oblique insertion laterally 0.3 to 0.5 twin. Still got to be careful here against deep perpendicular insertion as this can still puncture the lungs. That is the end of the kidney meridian. If you have any questions, you're welcome to either email me or send them through to your class rep. The next meridian we'll be covering is the pericardium meridian of the hand Ju Yin.